All right, calculus students, let's do some more test prep questions. Remember, you are supposed to attempt these on your own. You're not supposed to just come here and cheat and watch me do them or set them up. You want to go through the struggle of learning to do these on your own first. It's kind of good for your brain to have to think about them for a while and then come back later. All right, this is actually one of my favorite type of questions to do. The graph of a differentiable function is shown below. Which of the following is true? When you see the f prime, that just means, remember, you're talking about slope. So every one of the, the little things here on the left, every one of these is representing slope. So if we're talking about slope here, over here is just a y value. So we're saying, is the slope at 0 greater than the y value at x equals 0? So we're, again, we're just trying to figure out which one is true. So that's all you're doing here. You have to go through, think, OK, f of 0. So at f of 0 right here, the slope is negative. Is that greater than the y value of 0? The y value of 0 is 0. So here we have negative. Here we have 0. That is not true. OK, that's how you do this one. You just kind of go through there and figure out the slope versus the y value. For the second problem, this is where Mr. Brust is a little bit mean for putting this in Unit 3 because really, this is stuff we are going to cover in Units uh, Unit 5 and 6. We're going to cover this stuff pretty, uh, pretty strongly in Units 5 and 6, but that's okay. Let me show you how you do this. We're asking when is the particle farthest to the left. If you come back up here, here's usually how I read these problems. The position of the particle traveling along a straight line is x of t equals blah, blah, blah. I just totally ignore this. I don't care about that part yet. I'm trying to get to the whole point of what we're doing. And that is, this is position. So that's important. This x of t is position. And I want to know when is it farthest to the left. OK, so let's start off with this. Let's figure out at the beginning x of 0. What does that equal? Plug in a 0, and we get 3. Then let's plug in x of 10. So we went from the, inter from the interval 0 to 10 seconds. And let's just see where we are at 10. OK, I don't really want to do that. You can do that on your own. Figure out what 10 is, what, what the position is. OK, now we know the two positions. What about in between 0 and 10? Uh, when might we be far off to the left? Well, if you think about it, if you have an object that is moving like this, maybe it's moving to the right. And then it turns around and moves over here to the left. And then it turns around and comes back over here. Maybe it turns back around and it turns back around this way. Every single time it turns around and does something different, that means the position is changing. So the velocity moving right, the velocity is positive. Then the velocity is negative. Then the velocity is positive, negative, positive. So the velocity keeps changing. So what we really want to know is when does the velocity equal 0, because that will happen there, and there, and there. So this is pretty advanced. This is getting us into what you're going to talk about in Unit 5. So anytime it would turn around, that's the place where the velocity is 0. So you can see here, those would be like our candidates for when it would be furthest to the left. So let's just try it out. So if we take the derivative, now we go back to this thing. So v of t would equal. 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. Now you can set that thing equal to 0 and solve. I'm first going to factor out a 3, though. 3, that'll give me t squared uh, minus 6t plus what? Plus 5 equals 0. OK, now factor this thing, solve it. And that's where you're going to get t equals something and t equals something else. You're going to get two things. Those are the possible candidates for when it's to the left. So what you're going to do is come back up here and do x of and x of. You're going to do x of these things, wherever those answers are. And then you'll see which one of these numbers is furthest to the left. And the t value, remember these four t values, one of those is your answer. Okay, so depending on, on uh, which ones you get and which one is the smallest number. That was a hard problem. Number three, if you this one is actually a really straightforward, easy problem. The tough thing is trying to figure out what in the world they're asking us for. When it says average velocity, I want you to remember that velocity is the same thing as talking about the slope of position. So when it says that the position of an ant 
is this. We're looking for, the, and then we say average velocity. It's really saying what's the average slope of this, which is this. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, that's really what it's asking for. It's asking for the average from one point to the other. So this would be one of your x's. This is your other x. So the 1 and the 6 is going to go on bottom. And the only way you're going to get these y values is to plug them in here to figure out what the y values are. Number four, last one. This one, boy, we had a we had our challenging set here on this, this uh, packet. This one, when you solve it, actually, first, what's this? Mean value theorem. This is the important stuff. What is mean value theorem? Mean value theorem states when is the instantaneous rate of change equal to the average rate of change. That is the mean value theorem. So we're trying to figure out when does the derivative equal the average. So well, to do that, you're going to take the derivative. Let me just rewrite that here real quick. f prime of x is going to equal 3x squared and then that's it, 3x squared. So we're going to say 3x squared has to equal, because this is the f prime, and it needs to equal the average rate. Well, what, how do you do average rate? Again, that's just like our last problem that we just did. Back here, the average rate is this. When you're looking for the average velocity, average slope, average rate of change is just the y value. So these are both x's. So don't forget that you got 4 minus a negative 2 on bottom. So then you'd have to figure out what the y values are here. When you're done solving this, here's the most asked, most uh, brought up question I see on this problem, is you're going to get a plus or minus 2, and many of you would see that, think, oh, that's the answer. Brr, it's not. This is a tricky problem. I would be surprised if you see anything like this level of difficulty on the AP exam, but it's a good one for us to talk about. The reason the answer is only A and not plus or minus uh, 2, it's only 2, is because of this. You're on the interval from negative 2 to 4. And the mean value theorem can only take place inside the interval. It has to happen in between negative 2 and 4. It can't happen actually on the interval. Okay, That is the, with the definition of the mean value theorem. Really tricky, really mean way to set this up. Again, I'd be totally surprised if you had to deal with the end point of the mean value theorem on an AP exam. But that's the reason why we ignore option B. Good talking point for you to understand has to happen within the interval. Okay, that is it, right? That's the last one. Yes, it is. Okay, good luck on that mastery check.